everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here i'm shaughnessy and on this channel we discuss fragrance beauty and wellness and if you simply like to have a good time and you like my vibe subscribe so y'all i went back to ulta to try to smell some perfumes that i've been still waiting for them to put out so i can see how you know see if i want a full bottle of them well they had one of the two i was trying to smell but I do have some other perfumes here I wanted to talk to you all about um, to give my mini review on them, share it to tell you if I would want a full bottle. So we're going to be talking about, I think it's five perfumes today. I'm going to be doing some comparisons. I don't want this to be too, too long. So we're just going to jump right into it. Okay. So Juliet has a gun, not a perfume. This is not new at all, but it is new to me trying it because I've received a few samples from Sephora during, you know, some of the orders I've placed. So, Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume was released in 2010. Like I said, it's not new. It is described as a floral woody musk perfume for women and this perfume only showed one note when I looked on Sephora and then two notes that basically mean the same thing on Fragrantica and it was Cetalox and Ambroxan which seemed to be the same thing which I think emote the give the the fragrance uh, a musky amber scent when I looked up what they were so what got me interested in this perfume because it's been out, like I said, forever. Rhonda Larise, I saw one of her shorts and she called this a masterpiece. And I was like, really? A masterpiece? <laughs> so, when Sephora had, a, had the samples on there, I said, like, okay, I'm going to try it. Because I have never tried this original one, ever. I've tried Pear. I've tried Vanilla Vibes. Um, I think those are the only two I have smelled. That, oh, lipstick, something. You know, I've tried all the others, but not the original. And this is a clean woody musk. Um, to me, it smells when I spray it on my skin. It reminds me of like a rainwater shower. Maybe if you're like at, at one of those ritzy uh, resorts. What's her name? Jackie Ina. She had some shorts and she was showing she was somewhere in another country and the shower was outside and she was surrounded by you know flowers and this well it reminded me like if you were somewhere and you had a rain shower rain water shower and you were and it just smelled pretty and clean a little shampooy but very natural very natural smelling and right now i'm obsessed with this type of fragrance DNA. I'm obsessed with clean, you smell good, you smell pretty, not perfuming. I'm just obsessed with trying to collect some fragrances like that right now. Now this is one I had to, I, when I first smell it, I said, oh, mm -hmm, smell all right. And then I put it on my skin and again, I was like, hmm, it smells pretty good, but it's not one that, you can smell like that and you think it smells delightful. No, this is one you have to let waft and, and catch you off guard. And I'm like, whoo, I smell really good. And it was this, it was the not a perfume. It gives like a soft powdery cleanness. Again, think just, I keep thinking rainwater when I first smell it on my skin. And, but then it gets to that soft powdery clean just good smelling skin like a good smelling your body chemistry scent so with this one i would say the skin your skin your body chemistry is key it's key because i said this in a previous video i don't even remember which one when ronda Larie said this is a masterpiece you either this either works for you and you love it or you hate it or you don't smell it at all on yourself, but other people can smell you. And you have to say, well, do I want other people to smell me and they like it? And I can't even smell myself. So it's, it's one I would suggest trying out. Now for me, is it full bottle worthy for me? At this time, I'm going to say yes, because I'm obsessed 
with these clean smelling fragrances. The you smell goods, not perfumey, not floral, not sweet, just you smell good. Not that soap, just you smell like soap, but you, you just smell good and clean and fresh. And I really did, I really like the way it smells on my skin. So for me, it is full bottle worthy. When will I get a bottle? I don't know. But I do know I want to add it to my collection. So Juliet has a gun, not a perfume. It's a hit for me. And I can't even remember if I said this at the beginning of this video, y'all. So I'm telling y'all my thoughts on some of these uh, new releases. And then I'm telling you my thoughts on some perfumes I have sampled. And do I want a full bottle of them? Okay, the next perfume we're going to talk about is one I purchased a travel spray of, and this is Tom Ford's Soleil Neige. Now, this is described as an amber floral fragrance for men and women, and it was released in 2019. It has top notes of bergamot and carrot seeds, middle notes of orange blossom, white flowers, jasmine rose and turkish rose and it has base notes of benzoin vanilla and labdomum this is again that dna i'm obsessed with right now this is clean powdery musky sweet fresh expensive smelling it is it's good okay it's unique to me because let me tell you the story. I've said the story in a few videos. Maybe this will be the last one for a minute. I purchased the body oil to this because I didn't have any shimmer oils that had silver, but I didn't want thick silver. I just wanted a light, silvery, goldy look. And that's how that body oil looked. And I sprayed it. I was like, this smells good. And every time I would wear it, I would go, this smells really good. I wonder what I like the perfume. And then I looked at the price, and I went, oh, and I said, let me get the travel spray. I've never purchased travel spray of perfume from Tom Ford because they doggone expensive themselves. But y'all, it's good. I got a compliment the first day I wore it. It's another, like I said, you just smell really good. It lasted about six hours on my skin. But as I this, I wore this on a day I was running errands and I could smell myself when I moved. And I didn't even spray a lot of this because I was mixing and layering this with other things. I had this on my pulse points and I didn't spray my clothes because, you know, uh, this isn't a whole lot for the way I like to spray. So, yeah. But I could smell it. And six hours, I prefer eight. But I feel like with all perfumes, I would prefer at least eight hours because I would like a work day. You know, just give me eight hours, get me through the work day. But six hours is not bad to me. And I felt like I would have gotten more uh, of it would have lasted longer if I would have sprayed more. So... This is definitely full bottle worthy for me. I was even looking at Macy's because they're having a little 15% off sale. I'm thinking about Sephora. Like, uh, their VIB sales coming up. I'm like, do I want to spend that much? Because this is 3.4 ounce bottle worthy to me because it's year round. You smell good. It's unique smelling. It's described as the, the it's promoted i think more for the winter and is described as the sun reflecting off of the snow uh it does have a sparkly quality to it but to me it's year round and it's you just smell expensive and good and it is definitely full bottle worthy for me this would be the second tom ford perfume in my co entire collection and I love it. So yes, definitely I want to add a full bottle to my collection. When, again, I don't know, but I do want it. Okay, the next perfume we're gonna talk about is Oriana from Parfums de Marley. I 
ordered a little sample of the perfume off of Fragrance Net. This is described as a floral, fruity, gourmand fragrance. It was released in 2021. It has top notes of mandarin orange, bergamot, and grapefruit, middle notes of orange blossom, raspberry, and black currant, base notes of whipped cream, marshmallow, musk, and ambrette. This is a citrusy, creamy, slightly fruity, pink marshmallow scent. If you know Love Don't Be Shy, if you know Parfums de Marley Saffinade, it's a lighter, airier version of those fragrances, especially of Love Don't Be Shy. And in comparison with Saffinade, which is, you know, from Parfums de Marley, it's a younger, fresher, girlier, flirtier take on Saffinade. And to me, like I have them here. This is Love Don't Be Shy. Yeah, this is thicker, you know? Um, if this was too much for you, you would might would like Ariana. Love Don't Be Shy Extreme has that strong floral note. Now, let me tell y'all. Well, here, let me do this first. Saffinade, which is from the same house. Yeah, it's, they're all this, the same DNA, but this is more, not mature as in, old smelling but it's not flirty oriana is flirty girly pink like i said it's the younger fresher take of saffinade so if you like any of those or if any of those didn't work for you but you still wanted to try that dna i would give oriana a try now i will say for me personally i really love oriana it, it's I love it. I love the way it smells. I love the, this fragrance DNA, as you can tell. I do want a full bottle of it, but I don't need one. I, I'm not going to get a full bottle of this right now. Now, let's say if I didn't have Love Don't Be Shy Extreme, because to me, this is more, it's a little fruitier than the original Love Don't Be Shy. It has the floral aspect to it, but it's still kind of heavy to me still heavy if i didn't have this i would get oriana now because i prefer oriana to love don't be shy extreme which is very surprising to me but i do so oriana i would want a full bottle i do want a full bottle but i don't know when y'all i'm gonna have to finish up a, a, one of these bottles for this fragrance dna before i get oriana but it is nice it is pretty if you, I wouldn't say it's a straight up dupe for love, don't be shy, but it is very, very, very close. Um, I would say, I mean, it's very close. I don't want to give a percentage, but it's extremely close to where if you have any of these, I wouldn't say Oriana is a need, but if you want it lighter, a little girlier version and you didn't have you only had one of these fragrances I mentioned then yeah I would say Oriana's great but for me who has Saffinade, Love Don't Be Shy, Love Don't Be Shy Extreme, Caramel Overdose, Benevolence, all of those kind of give off similar vibes. Uh, the Dolce & Gabbana Porfums, you know I have all of those so I said Shaughnessy Girl. Even though you love it, you can wait on that one. Even though you are obsessed with this hot pink, beautiful bottle, because I love the Parfums de Marley uh, bottles, even though you're obsessed with it, you can wait. You can wait. So it is beautiful. I do want another, I, I would, I do want a full bottle, but, and I will get one one day, but it won't be anytime soon. Okay, the next perfume I want to talk about is Very Good Girl Blush. This is a perfume I went to Ulta multiple times trying to smell. They said they had it there. They never had the tester out. I finally smelled it, y'all. So 
Very Good Girl Blush is described as a Sheepra floral. It was released this year. It has top notes of bergamot, mandarin orange, middle notes of peony, rose water, ylang ylang, base notes of vanilla and tonka bean. So I can still smell it on the tester. I sprayed it on myself when I went to Ulta, you know, testing it out on my skin. And at initial spray, I was like, whoa, yes, okay. This is the pink version I wanted. This is what I was hoping it was gonna be. I almost was like, I'm about to get it now. But guess what, they didn't have any in store. And then I was like, slow your roll, Shanti, slow your roll. I have never, I don't believe in my life, purchased a perfume when I first smelled it. I, I don't remember ever doing that. Not since I really, I don't. I miss, yes. You know, hundred plus dollar perfumes? No. So I was like, just wear it and then see what you think. So in the beginning, like I said, it's it's bright, citrusy, floral, sweet. And I was like, whoa, okay. And then I was walking around and I kept smelling, kind of sprayed my hand, and I kept smelling my hand, I kept smelling the tester strip. And I was like, wait a minute. After that initial burst, I said, this is smelling like the original good girl. I said, wait a minute. What? <laughs> then I was walking around. I came home. I was working. I was like, I'm still smelling it. And then I said, wait a minute. This is smelling like very good girl. Uh, very good girl and good girl glam, like different aspects of it. I was picking it up and then I compared the notes and the notes really, they really didn't have a lot of similar notes, but towards the mid of the fragrance, I was like, this is reminding me of these two a little bit, but more vanilla and more, it's softer, just softer. Okay. So this fragrance took me on a ride. It, it took me on a ride, I felt, of the majority of the entire line of, of the Good Girl line. Because when I first sprayed, I was like, oh, this is what I was hoping it was gonna be. Oh, it's smelling good, it's smelling pink, it's smelling girl, it's smelling light, it's smelling airy. And then a few minutes, I was like, well, this is smelling like the original Good Girl. I said, oh. And then towards the mid, I said, oh, okay, this is smelling like a combination of these two with a little bit of whatever they added into the Very Good Girl blush. And smelling it on the paper, it just smells like a very light, nice floral scent. So it lasted well. It had, it had good projection because it lasted just from spraying it on my hand. I want to say through washing my hands, through eating lunch. I could smell it over six hours and that was two sprays. So I feel like it's a good performer as are, I don't think I have a bad good girl performer except for the original one. I feel like I can't ever really smell it on me I don't feel like it's a beast that other people have described. I, I don't get that with, with my body chemistry. But they all perform well. So I think it'll be a compliment getter. I love the packaging. I love that pink shoe. I do think it was a nice addition to the flanker, the flanker line. The good girl flankers. Uh, this is one... I want the full bottle, but this is when I feel like I need to use up one of the good girls before I add another one. Because, it, like I said, that opening blew me away. It was what I was hoping for. But then I was like this. Like, it it, it smelled uh, like a good girl flanker. But I wanted more of that opening, that beautiful, sweet, bright, citrusy, floral, pinky scent to last more. So, and not be picking up different fragrances, different notes or different vibes from previous flankers. 
So I just don't feel like I need it in my collection right now. I like it. It's cute. It's nice. Like I said, it's a nice addition. Maybe if you don't have some, if you I, if you don't have all of the ones that weren't that limited edition packaging, and special edition packaging. If you just have the all the collection like I do, of just the standard ones they've been bringing out. This is one. It's nice. It's pretty. And who knows? I might change my mind and get the one ounce if they're you know. But right now, I just don't feel like I need it. I just don't feel like I need it. I think I want to go smell it again. I liked it. But like I said, I just, I feel like it wasn't different enough if you have every good girl they made. And I do. So I do want it at some point in my collection because I want that pink shoe, honey. I want it. And it smells good, but I feel like I can wait. I feel like I can wait on that one. Okay, y'all, the last fragrance we're going to talk about that has been breaking the internet for, what, weeks now? This is Kaoli Yum Pistachio Gelato 33. Now, I could not find, you know, what because fragrance, fragrance got had this described as a, as a unisex fragrance, which I had never heard Mona or any other place say that. So I'm just going to, I don't know what exactly to describe this as. Like I like to say, oh, this is described as a floral amber. I couldn't find that for this perfume. But it was released this year. As y'all know, it's just released. The main notes, because this has a, this has a book of notes. So I'm just going to go with the main notes that came on the box, okay? And this has, uh, the main notes are pistachio gelato, hazelnut, sweet rum, whipped cream, marshmallow, and cotton candy. Y'all, before I, before I even spray this, well, smell this again. I have been watching reviews on this perfume, and this perfume is one of the most, nobody's saying the same thing. Nobody about this perfume. You you have the people who are saying it's sweet and gourmand. Then you have the people saying it doesn't last. You, you, it's just so many different opinions about this perfume. Now, when I first, let me tell you this. I had no expectations with this perfume, okay? Kayali fragrances, they can promote certain ones, and I feel like the way they market and promote them, that when you get it, it doesn't smell like nothing they promoted, okay? That vanilla, patchouli, whatever, the, everybody, that gold ornate bottle, it just total let down for me. I've noticed with Kaoli fragrances, you got to smell them. You got to wear them. You got to give them a minute sometimes before you can form uh, your true opinion about what you think of them. Some are easy. Love. Just love them. And some you have to be like, I don't know. Let me think. And then some for me are just a no. And that's that house for me. So I had no expectations because other people, while I was watching their videos, they were thinking this was gonna, which it was described as their gourmand fragrance. And people were thinking this was gonna be some edible, delicious, best gourmand ever. But like I said, I had no expectations. I really didn't. So when I first sprayed this, and smelled it I was surprised by how much I liked it okay on my skin at first it's like a green creamy nutty fragrance and then and I was like I'm not mad at it and that's what I was thinking when I first sprayed it I was like, okay I'm not mad at it I like it it's, it's nice but then later on it became sweeter creamier fluffy, airy, marshmallowy. And I was like, I'm really liking this as I'm getting whiffs and wafts of this. It's smelling pretty good. And let me tell you what it reminded me of. Now, these, this is not a dupe. 
or anything, but once you have, once you smell perfumes and you're reviewing perfumes and fragrance smiths, you can tend to pick out certain things and say, oh, it reminds me of this a little bit. Not saying it's a dupe. So Kayali Yum Perfume, the more I kept smelling it, it reminded me certain aspects of the perfume reminded me of Killian Princess. And y'all know how I think of Princess. You know how I feel about it. It's a citrusy kind of spicy marshmallow. And I'm thinking the fluffy marshmallowy I pick up in Yum. That's the same kind of airy, not gooey. It's like a airy, fluffy, sweet, kind of powdery marshmallow that I get from Princess. So that's what I'm picking up in here. I'm also getting hints of the Sol de Janeiro 62. And I think it's the pistachio note. Yes. But it is so much softer and toned down in the yum than in the perfume Charosa 62 or the mist it's a softer version and it lasted four good hours to where i was getting whiffs and wafts and i could smell it on my skin now at the six hour mark it became a skin scent where i could do this and I can still smell it. Now the eight hour mark, that's when I was hunting. You know, you gotta hunt. Is it there? Is it there? Is it there? So I would say, I would say you get four to six good hours from, I did, from this perfume, which to me, it's on par with most Kayali fragrances. This said intense. And I, I can't remember if they said, when I was watching Mona, intense as in the longevity, because it's not that. This is, like I said, to me, on par with the other Kayali fragrances. But it smells really good in the air. This is one I catch a whiff, a waft of it of myself in the air, and I'm like, this smells really good. Now, when they say intense on the fragrance, I was thinking, to me, this is the perfect spring summer gourmand. Just let me tell you, a lot of people consider this a summer gourmand perfect fragrance. It can be too much for me. In triple digit heat, I don't want to smell this. That's just me. It can get cloying a little bit. It has to be, I don't, if it's 105 degrees, I don't want to smell this usually. I don't want it that intense nuttiness sweet i don't know i just it's too much for me this one i feel like wouldn't now intense version i was thinking maybe in the summer in the heat with this intensified the heat intensify these notes more i do think so now i think it will be more intense then because it's very light it's very airy but i can still smell it when i wear it but it is extremely light. But again, I'll, you know, Kayali has a, a mixture of the line that it, some fragrances are really light. Musk, the one I love that one. To me, it's light. To me, uh, citrus is kind of light. But it's this just smells good. It smells good to me. Now I will say, after watching so many reviews and reading reviews on this perfume if your sephora carries this in store i would highly suggest going and testing it out or even requesting a sample from them if sephora still does that because this gets so many mixed reviews if you sephora doesn't have it in store you don't live by sephora i would say start with the travel spray like me and see what you think. I also think this is a great layering perfume. I, I just feel like it is. Because it's so creamy, light, marshmallowy, cotton candy, nutty. I, I just I just feel like it, it's a good layering perfume. So you have to see what you think. Because I was expecting it to be the the worst per that invite amber 
and that vanilla patchouli sugar vanilla patchouli like i said that gold bottle those are the two that i was just i couldn't even want to keep wearing them on my skin i gave those away because I, I couldn't do it that's just not how i want to smell so kaoli can be hit or miss with a lot of people so i would definitely say get the travel spray it's not I don't think the only full bottle perfume I've ever blind bought from Kaoli was the Eden Apple 01 because everybody was basically saying the same thing and I was reading the notes and I was like, well, you can't really, I mean, I just figured I would like it. It's not too much you can do with a fruity fragrance to, to make it bad. So, but the, the other ones, I would say try them if you can or start with the small bottle because the, the line is very hit or miss with people. But I do like it and I do want a full bottle. Again, I don't know if I'm going to rush and get the full bottle, even though the bottle is gorgeous. I'm thinking about what I want to get from the Sephora sale, spring sale. Will this be one of the perfumes that makes the cut? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but it's very nice to me. And like I said, it was surprising. I do feel like I don't have anything that smells exactly like this in my co collection. Because I, it has a green citrusy note that comes out. And then you have all those sweet gourmand notes. But it all works. So I don't know, y'all, um, if it's going to make the cut, like I said, for the spring sale. But I do want a full bottle of this because that bottle is stunning so i was hoping i would like this just because i love that bottle and i want that bottle in my collection so i'm happy that i like it enough to get a full bottle of it and it will be in my collection at some point Nigga, i just want to say something about the kaoli fragrances <sighs> why are they so hyped I just wonder why Kaoli fragrances are so hyped. They come out with so many. To me, they come out with too many, in my opinion. Um, in one year, I think they come out with three to five perfumes every year. That is a lot because it's not like these are cheap. I mean, they're more on the affordable side for niche, and I'll give them that. But it's so many they come out with. But every time they come out with one, it breaks the internet. And I just want to know why. Why? Because, so y'all, I, I got interrupted. <laughs> so um, I just don't understand why they're so hyped. Is it be, help me understand, because I'm not dogging them or anything, but it seems like every time a Kaoli fragrance comes out, and I could see if it was, you know, once a year or something. But like I said, they come out with three to five perfumes every year, and each time it breaks the internet. And kudos to them. Kudos to, to Mona build your brand girl get your money i'm all about that but i just wonder because it's like do people get them to rave about them and then do some people get them to just dog them i just don't understand because it's a very you love them you're in the middle or you can't stand them I, I just, I don't know, but it seems like every time one comes out, we all want to smell it, and myself included. Now, I know why I do it. It's because I want to review the, the fragrance, and I know they're hot ticket items. They are, but why? Why? <laughs> I just, I don't get it. I've been tr thinking about that. I mean, it's just always so much hype around each Kaoli release. I'm just curious. Is it the excellent marketing? Is that it? Because I can't think of, I don't know. <laughs> Back to yum. I do want a full bottle. I just don't know when I'm going to get it. So y'all, these were my thoughts on these five perfumes that I have been sampling, trying out. And I think this is the first well, I haven't done a ton of videos like this, but I've done a few where I want a full bottle of every perfume I talked about. Now, granted, I'm going to say it again. I'm not about to rush out and get a full bottle of none of them because I like my deals and discounts, okay? But 
I really enjoyed all of them. And like I said, this is the first video where I would like a full bottle at some point in time in my collection. So if you enjoyed the video, please give me a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you think of the Kaolion perfume. Tell me what you think of the Good Girl Blush. Those are the two newest ones. And just tell me your thoughts on any of them. But I really want to know y'all's thoughts on the Yum and the Good Girl Blush. I really do. And please share this video with everybody, y'all. Because you know what we trying to do. What we trying to do. What we trying to do. <laughs> and please don't forget to turn on your notification bell. So you don't ever miss any of my videos. And as I always say, if you like my vibe, subscribe. Until next time, bye.